Let's see how we can make a simple website that uses React for the front end and Django for the back end. First, we'll need to install Node.js, Python, and Django. You'll also need to run pip install Django course headers. Then, in an empty project, create a folder called front end. Open a terminal on the front end folder and run npm create vite at latest. I'm going to call my project react underscore front end. And we're going to use JavaScript React. Now we can just follow these on screen instructions. Instructions. Let's first cd into react underscore front end, then run npm install, and then run the server using npm run dev. If you hold down control and click on this link, it will take us to our React app. And here you can see we have the basic outline of a React application. So now we have the front end set up, let's create the back end. So first I'm going to create a back end folder. I'm going to open another terminal on this folder and run django-admin start project and I'm going to call it API. Now we can cd into that API folder and run python manage.py run server. Now our Django server is also up and running. Now due to the amazingness of Django and Vite, every time we edit and save a file, the updates will become effective almost immediately. So now we have the back end and the front end running. To actually send something back when we make a request, let's create a file views.py where we will define our views. We will import JSON response from Django.http and then create a simple test view, taking a request as the argument. The view is simply going to return a message of unavailable. Here, message is the key and unavailable is the value. This will be the JSON that is sent to our React application. Now, to make Django listen for requests, we will need to create an API endpoint or URL to make our requests too. Let's first head over to the urls.py we're going to import our test view from dot views and then we will add a new path my underscore endpoint with our test view as the second parameter. This does two things. It causes Django to listen for requests on this URL and also maps it to our view. So anytime we make requests to that URL, it automatically goes to the test view. Now, just some admin stuff. We need to go to settings.py and make some changes. First, we'll add cause headers to our installed apps. Then we'll add cause headers .middleware, middleware to our middleware list. Make sure you add it at the top or you run the risk of it not working properly. Then we'll set cause origin allow all to false and add our React application's address to the whitelist. Now there should be no cross-origin request issues when making our requests from React. So now the fun can actually begin. Let's go to app.jsx and we're going to delete all the imports except useState and the style sheet. I'm also going to delete everything inside the return function. Now in our return function we need to create our front end page. We will simply have a heading and a button. Then we will use some conditional rendering to render our response if we have one. We will then create a state for our response which I will initialize to blank text. Because we're using useState, any changes in these variables will result in a re-render of the specific components. Our first function will be to fetch the data from the server. Note that this URL corresponds to the one we set up in our urls.py on the backend. We will then wait for the response and set our response state equal to whatever response the Django server sends back. We will now need to create that handle button click function for our button. This will simply call the fetch data function. At this stage, our React application should look like this. If we now click the button, we should get some data from the server and see a change in the React application. Let's take it a step further and specify some parameters in our GET request and have Django send back an appropriate response. First, let's make a new state for our request data. We will initialize this to null. Now, let's add in an input to our React component. When the input changes, we are going to trigger the handle change function by specifying it in onChange. I will limit this input to numbers only by setting the type equal to number. Then I'll need to create this handle change function. This will simply update our request state to whatever value the input change to. Next, we need to change our fetch data function to include some parameters, i.e. our request data. I'm first going to replace the apostrophes with backticks. Then after the slash, we will add a question mark indicating our parameters. I will set id equal to our request data. 
Notice the use of the dollar sign and brackets to format the URL for our request data. Back in our Python views.py, all we have to do now is get this ID parameter from the URL and send back a response. We get the ID from request.get.get and we specify the parameter in the parentheses. Once we have the ID, we're going to check if it is valid. In other words, it's not null or empty. If it's not valid, we will simply return a message saying no data specified. Then we're going to check if the ID converted to an integer is equal to 1. If so, we will send back the word 1. We will copy this and do the same for 2. If none of these conditions are met, we will return the word unavailable. Now, if we open and refresh our React site, you can see that the response part of the website is not rendering as the response is still blank. Once we click the button, we will get the words no data specified sent back from the server because our request data is null. However, if we enter 1, we will see that the server sends back the word 1 and this reflects in React. The same goes for 2. So let's quickly recap what happens here. We created the web page using React. Here we added a heading an input and a button, as well as a message. When we click the button, the button's onChange prop is called, which is the handle button click function. This calls fetch data, which then sends a request to the URL we specified. Since Django is listening for this URL, when we make our request, the URLs.py file automatically calls the view that we link to the URL. Our view handles the request, sends a response, and finally our message is updated with the response. So this is just a very simple example of how you could create a site using React and Django. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please leave a like down below and consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.